Welcome to this week uh, on Freedom One. This is HearingGod.tv. It's our weekly uh, prayer and intercession time. Thanks for joining. Um, it's just awesome. 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 <laughs> oh, I just, thank Jesus. I just praise him and honor him. I had an awesome day of just being filled up in the Lord. Um, He's been so good, so good. Jesus, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you to come and to join us in this uh, intercession. We just ask that you would guide it and uh, that uh, your will be done this day. We invite you in uh, with power and demonstration and in your precious name, Jesus. This is a message from David. Um, he He's asking for some prayer, but he said, This year as the Lord led, I went to the highways and byways looking for souls to save and made videos on YouTube. The devil has unleashed an attack that has not allowed me to make any more videos or go from my home. This year, the devil from the beginning has tried to stop me. He has attacked my finances, my family, and every area of my life, and now my body. I'm still ministering and having Bible studies in my home, but from my computer phone or visitors to my home. Three weeks ago, I underwent surgery for a bladder mass to be removed and still recovering from that, um, I'm very tired. Now they have found colon cancer in my body. So he's requesting a prayer chain uh, to let everyone know. Um, As I began to pray for him when this first came in, I could just hear uh, victory. As I was reading it, I could feel victory in his voice. So I shared that with him. Um, and then I had a, a righteous anger rising up in me, uh, you know, regarding the enemy in this. So, um, uh, then he wrote back and he said um, that he could feel, he could feel stuff. When he opened up my message, he could feel the Lord um, in that. Um, and he, he, he got joy, he, and he began to laugh at his situation and the attack of the devil. So, amen. Yeah, that's how we have to have. And that's that victory in his voice. It's coming out more. Um, and he said he already told the devil to start running. Um, I understand that through weakness is when Christ defeated the devil. So here, well, where I am made weak is strength is made perfect. So um, he's excited for all of you joining him in prayer. Um, you know, and you look, you look at people in the world when something, when you hear the word cancer, it's like, oh, you know, they just immediately feel like it's a death sentence or something. But I am so encouraged by his, his fervor, you know, and I can just feel it coming off of his message. Um, that he he knows who he is in Jesus. And so we just agree with him. On behalf of David, we bind up cancer. We speak to his colon, and we command you, colon, to reject this cancer in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no place in David's body. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your Holy Spirit to burn with your fire within his soul so that he will know his healing has come. Speak your healing power. And we seal this in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, and we speak this forth with your victory, Lord Jesus, knowing that it is finished. It is finished. Thank you, Jesus. We also pray for his family, for his family, that uh, no one will despair, 
or think negative thoughts concerning this, but that they will look to David and mount up with wings as eagles in uh, faith that he has and cling to that knowing that what he speaks is the truth. That his Lord has healed him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wow, I'm feeling some anointing praying for him. I like that. Um, okay. Um, Zeze from YouTube would, is wanting prayer to receive the gift of tongues. And they say, I'm desperate. <laughs> So thank you, Lord Jesus, because desperate people are just the type of people that your Holy Spirit loves to fill up because you can use a desperate person. Because when we're empty of ourself, uh, you fill us up. So we agree with Zeze, with their heart. We bind up any blockages to receiving this in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak freedom to that tongue and faith to loosen. We bind up rigidity, if that's a word, so that there is no preconceived notions and no hindrances. But an outpouring of love and adoration for you, Lord Jesus. We speak forth the tongue to flow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pour forth your Holy Spirit upon them. That they might declare your goodness, Lord Jesus. I speak your power over them. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, uh, Jason's been getting uh, premature ventricular contractions. And um, that that's in line with his... Um, I forgot what it's called again. Something white syndrome. It's a heart condition uh, where the electrical functioning kind of gets confused in his heart. Um, so it's acting up on him. Um, it's not coming into alignment with the perfect word of God. So we are going to pray for that. We pray for Jason's heart. Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, and we just ask that you would go forth in power and surround Jason's heart. Place your hands around his heart, Lord Jesus, and call it into alignment and perfect working order. The curse causeless shall not come. We speak anything that would hinder this healing and restoration of his heart down now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak life. We speak abundant life. We speak forth rhythm to that heart in perfect timing with your will, Lord Jesus. We bind up any anxiety or fear in the mighty name of Jesus. We command it down to your footstool, Jesus. We impart your peace, your peace, Jesus, to flood him, to flood him. Peace in every part of his body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Send forth your encouragement to him. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Okay. And if any of you um, happen to see any visions or hear anything or get a scripture or whatever from the Lord regarding anything I'm praying about, this isn't just me sitting here praying. Um, I don't know, a few weeks ago, somebody kept attributing everything that that they were getting to me. And I'm like, it's not me. <laughs> the prayers of the righteous avail much, and you guys are righteous too. <laughs> we're all doing this together. So, um, you know, we look for the body of Christ to flow in our giftings. So um, if you're getting things for people, um, you know, you can either write something now or go to the forum uh, and post it. Um, the forum is at hearinggod.proboards.com. You can join in there. Uh, we have prayer and pray, place to put praise reports and whatever. So um, make use of that. Enrico is, um, you know, God's wanting him to go deeper. And as the road gets narrow, it gets a little tougher. And so his desire is for obedience. As we know, obedience is the thing that's exercised. Just ask Lord Jesus that you would just place your hand over Enrico. And as well as with Enrico, we all desire to have that obedience, that we will serve you, that when you will say something, that we will not question and let doubt and, 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 and what other people are saying that could be negative to bring us down but that we desire and we hunger uh, to be obedient because we know when we are obedient, we are under your hand of protection. We are under your covering, we're in your will, and we're moving. So, as well as with Enrico, we ask this for ourselves as well, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would expose uh, areas where we struggle with obedience to you, Lord Jesus, that you would expose them so that we can really focus on them, so that we can cling to your word and what your word has to say about it, so that we can, um, you know, conform to you. Lord Jesus, we give you permission. We give you permission to correct us. We ask, Lord Jesus, that that flesh, that old man die. It is our heart's cry, it is our heart's desire, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus, to purify. Help us to conform to you, Lord Jesus, no matter how much it hurts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you have begun a good work into us and that you are bringing it forth to fruition. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yes, your tooth socket pen seems to be finally healing. Yes, we agree that there aren't any... No more of these nasty little fragments coming out. That's got to hurt. You said it was lacerating your tongue and stuff. They just kind of been popping out. We speak restoration to that gum line. Indeed, we agree with Penn that every bit of infection die in the mighty name of Jesus. That that healing balm go forth 
Brabakana and continue on. Brabaka Mobaba Sikya for complete restoration. Bobokina Bokode Bakara Bokoda Bakya. Strengthen her, Lord Jesus. Brebekana Bokoda Baka. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Memera Shutteraba for your healing. Your healing over her. Brabo Shukina Bakana Bokoda Bakira Bokoda Baka. Brebeki Yikano Didi Ronda Bi Bakana Baka. There might even be a teaching lesson in that pen. You might be able to share your experience, something you learned during that time, because let me tell you, that was a tough one. You know, everybody kept praying and praying. <laughs> so, whoo. Then that is again. Okay, I gotta, I gotta email James. He, he didn't know if I'm, I was still gonna keep trying or not today, so I'm always gonna keep trying. Boy. I think, what, 15 minutes is the worst it's ever been, <laughs> where I keep trying and trying and trying. Ah, that's the one place where being, um, I don't know, flint face comes in real handy. <laughs> and you know what, Penn, that you were next on my list for prayer anyhow, so, cool. Um, okay, we're going to pray for Rose next. Um, Rose uh, having back pain, mostly the thoracic region. Uh, it seems that it's sending shock waves, shock waves up and down the entire spine. And if Pen, if you have any updates on that, um, you know, any more targeted ways to pray, let me know. Um, a family friend is helping her. She has an MRI scheduled soon. So that's all we know right now. Um, we are, we are going to pray for for um, for Rose's back. Lord Jesus, we just come to you. Thank you that there's power in your mighty name, Jesus. We just speak the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus into Rose's back. We call forth alignment. Everything pop back into place. We speak life. We speak life into the muscles. We bind up trauma over any of the muscles and any of the connective tissue. Any of the nerves. We speak life. And alignment, and functioning properly just as the good Lord intended. Go back into place in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command the enemy's hand off now in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord Jesus pour forth the warmth of your healing power over her back right now that she may praise and glorify your name give her strength Lord Jesus strength Lord Jesus we speak that this will not inhibit her work that they're not long drawn out therapy or anything we just call this forth now in my, Jesus mighty name thank you for restoration to her back. We seal this with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the enemy has nothing, nothing against your precious blood. We do bind the enemy from this. We receive no attacks in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to go to the footstool. The footstool, because every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over Rose's back. Amen. Baby, she can have a Okay. Well, we'll have to get some updates about 
how she's doing. A prayer request or a praise report would be awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, Juliana, please pray for me to know my calling and for the gift that has been placed in me to be stirred up so I can start walking in it, please. Okay, I have an awesome link for you. I share this link with people often. This link is not, um, this isn't going to show you anything you don't already, you know, it won't be any big surprise of like, oh, it'll be something where deep inside you know it's true, okay? And if it's something that you're not recognizing, it's maybe because you're not being real with the test because you have to be bru brutally honest with yourself. The It's a spiritual gifting text spiritual giftings test at buildingchurch.net backslash g2s dot htm um, I recommend this because it is um, it is uh, really good um, oh looky there pen it, it, yeah pen is not uh, Rose <laughs> feeling heat between the shoulder blades uh, she's a really good friend of hers and so last week I asked that she would put place her hands over where it hurt and asked her to stand in the gap so this is cool because it's kind of like it's happening this week huh that is exciting so anyhow um, back to the, the the spiritual giftings test um, I actually, um, originally I found this in a paper form, but over time uh, I was able to find it online and it's nice because it's just all right there. And uh, uh, it will, you, you know how you, you need to write things out on the wall. Well, this is good because and my testimony with this giftings test is, is I took it and you know then some years went by I took it again well when I took it again my spiritual eyes had really been opened and I began operating and you know I, spiritual warfare became real just so many things became real for me and so I realized that I really want to be effective for God and I need to know who I was in him so I took the the test and things were popping up that I knew I knew they were there but at the time the Lord was stretching me he was giving me dreams um, that dealt with counsel to people in leadership positions I kept finding myself the Lord would keep drawing me next to uh, you know like prophets and such and then I would become as an armor bearer for them and so I realized, oh, that makes sense of why I have these giftings. The problem was, is I wasn't really operating in them. I was timid because I was just, you know, this young girl. I didn't go to prophet schools and I didn't do this and that. And there were all these people around me that did. And they let me know it. <laughs> uh, you know, that was back in the days of, you know being in church stuff and and whatever um, but anyhow um, after I took the test I realized you know and I also had a prophetic word of there is a new boldness and tonight is the night of that new boldness and so I actually decided to believe what I was hearing so I decided you know what the Lord says these are my giftings these things, you know, really reverberate in my spirit. I'm excited about them. I feel joy and sharing and whatnot. I'm not going to listen to anybody else, but I'm going to step out in faith and do it. And so I got a message in a dream, and it was a little bit of a hard message. It was something where I had to step out on a limb. I had to use that boldness. I had to really believe, yes, I, I know I hear from God and I'm going to do it. And so when I stepped out in that boldness, knowing what I, what I knew from the giftings test, 
instead of getting yelled at or reprimanded or whatever, the person in the leadership position was like, wow, you're hearing from God and blah, 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 blah. And it just, in an instant, like all of those, those things, you know, and it was, it was such a relief. And it was exciting for me because I knew that I was operating in the Lord and I didn't have to worry about what other people were saying. I knew who I was and so it will confirm things for you. So I will pray uh, for you and, but I just wanted to really share that giftings test with you because um, it's awesome. It's awesome. And again, you know, it won't be anything new. It'll be stuff that deep down you'll be like, ah, yes, you'll just know. And in writing it on the wall, you'll begin to recognize when God starts to put you in situations, when things start to happen to stretch you so that you won't be all mousy and timid, but you will be bold and say, I know this is me, and I know what the Lord is doing, and walk into it. Just do it. Step out in faith. So, yay. All right. So, I would just pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my sister, Juliana. I thank you for her zeal and her excitement and desiring to serve you with all that she is. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for her giftings. And may they explode uh, out from, from uh, a dormancy into a new season for her, Lord Jesus. No holds barred, or whatever that phrase is. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing on her. I ask for more anointing upon her as she she dives in and seeks you into the deeper things, Lord Jesus, that she would know that she knows that she knows uh, what she is to do in this life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for her confidence in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for her steps are ordered, and she is steadfast, and she is walking in the way that you have led her. I'm seeing that as I'm praying. I'm seeing you walking very deliberately and steadily with confidence. Awesome. Yep. You are going to stretch. <laughs> All right. Now I noticed Dylan stopped in here. Hi. Um, you have a lot of homework to do this week. And I hope that I don't get discouraged. Amen. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would just help him to order it out. Help him to organize everything so that he can do A, B, C, D and not sit there for hours on end twiddling his thumbs. Lord Jesus, help him to um, when one thing stops to go to the next thing so that there's forward motion. I speak forward motion over Dylan. I bind up any blockages, anything that would try to woo him away from uh, getting the work done. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that he cares, that he cares about getting it done. Help him, Lord, to get it done cheerfully. Steadily and cheerfully. Be the song in his heart. Thank you, Jesus. I just speak that clarity over Dylan in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. I love praying over you guys. I feel such anointing bubbling up. It's awesome. You guys are awesome. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a from the forum. Um, Andy wrote, Virginia, who spoke in tongues just once, six months ago, wants to do this now but has some kind of blockage. Um, and he's been speaking to her about it, counseling, but he, he wants additional prayer. And that's how it is sometimes, you know, it's if you don't exercise stuff, even what you have can be taken away. Um, and if you're listening to negativity, so right now we'll just deal with negativity. Any negative voices that have spoken as, as if coming out arrows, we just call them all down, void and powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember your first love, Virginia. That she must just let go and let you, God. Give her that peace, Lord Jesus. We bind up anxiety. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call forth your power to flood from her innermost being, and that she may flow out as rivers of living water. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give her that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Okay, uh, Juliana, is the anointing hot and tingly? Uh, weird question. No, it's not weird. Um, it's all sorts of things for all different kinds of people. <laughs> um, everybody feels different sensations. Um, uh, yeah, hot and tingly. Um, I will feel fire in my belly. Some people, um, their hands get really hot and even sweaty or oily, uh, oil will appear. Um, uh, I, sometimes I feel oil running down my head. Um, you know, that's like, duh, you know, in the scriptures, it's like uh, the, the oil of anointing poured over people's head or whatever. So I know, you know, it's it, scripturally, you, you, you find some key clues there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's different for all kinds of people, so it's cool, huh? So you're feeling that, huh? <laughs> Have you felt that before? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you feel heat sometimes. Awesome. All right. Okay. Um. And this was a, a prayer request. Yeah, heat from head to toe and emotional. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a little bit quirky for every every person. It's a little a little different. Yeah, and some people do cry. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like when God when God takes over. You know, our mere bodies. When you think about it, um, when He comes. In, in judgment, I, you know, our bodies just can't stand. That's why we got to conform to him because his righteousness is so awesome. It just burns, you know. That's why it's like whatever's left after that burn, you know, is, is righteousness um, because the sin just gets <laughs> so. All right. Let me get back here. Uh, the YouTube uh, question and, and re prayer request, um, you know, and I had, I had, there had been answers to this written on the forum. Um, you know, you can go to the forum, hearinggod.proboards.com, and and read through it. Uh, I included it. I think it's under questions. Um, but anyhow, um, a lot of things have been happening to this individual just you know she's saying can only be described described as a major attack or a curse um so she said i thought we're under grace now so even if i fell behind on her tithe it's a tithe kind of question 
God would be merciful, especially if I had other matters financially uh, that I needed money for. I also read somewhere that under the law, you would just add 20% to what you owed and then get caught up when you could. Um, you know, she's confused. What's going on? You know, why is there, you know, attacks coming and stuff? And basically, um, you know, if it's not a curse, what else would it be? She did confess to me uh, privately that um, she was adopted. You know, this sort of thing could be uh, an inherited generational curse kind of thing. So, and she is aware of some of my videos, and I do have um, prayers to break generational curses under them. Um, probably under the spiritual house cleaning generational curse video would be my guess of where it would be. I think I have it under more than one video. But um, if it's not that, um, we might have an access point for the enemy. And how does the enemy get access points? Um, you know, anytime we're not in faith or we're not mirroring what God says who we are, uh, what we're called to do, anything, that's viewed as sin, and sin hands us over to Satan, um, you know, because what happens is, is the, the, the God of this world, the little g-God of this world, um, if we do not believe who Jesus says we are, then he gets to be in control. See, either we can be king or Satan can be king. So it could be in the smallest of areas where people are saying, oh, gosh, what are you cursed? And where you start to say, gosh, I wonder if I'm cursed. And, you know, and then people start saying, yeah, yeah, you're cursed, you know, and see how it keeps it starts growing and stuff. First of all, if other people are saying negative things, then we need to, you know, words are like arrows. Okay, these people are saying things, and we have authority to call those things down void and powerless. Okay, in the name of Jesus, we have all power, so um, we just call those things down. So it could be that because people can curse us with their words, and especially if, if we're close to them, maybe they're not, you know, it doesn't matter. Every idle word, right. So people can be say, saying things, not being serious like they're a witch or something, but they can be saying it enough to curse. Um, you know, like if if somebody's saying, oh, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, and then if you start, well, yeah, I guess that was stupid, you're kind of, you know, agreeing with it. So it's it's very, very fine line, okay? So it could be negative thoughts and, and words. Um, could be a lot of things. Um, I gave an example of um, once of a person who had a brother in a very um, tragic kind of accident where a mirror broke and he stepped on it and the mirror like cut a major something in his leg or or whatever happened he almost died and what happened to her that was such a traumatic thing you know her brother um, almost dying it was such a traumatic thing that that trauma opened up the door for fear and so the problem later is is she would she would be talking about oh i'm having all these dreams and i'm having all this warfare and it's always the enemy is always trying to attack me you know trying to kill me with mirrors and stuff and just last week a mirror broke and i almost stepped on it you know and it's the enemy it's the enemy it's the enemy when really it, you know and this is hard it's because she let the fear of that traumatic event where she almost lost her brother. When you're not in faith, you're in fear. The enemy can attack you in that spot. Okay? Now, he might not be able to attack her with, 
you know, oh, a guy coming out of a building with a gun, you know, he's, he's taken hostages and whatever, you know, he's not going to attack that one area. It's because of that, that soft spot right there, because it's tied in with that traumatic event. So she let fear in. And so Satan keeps going before God and saying, ha, ah, you know, she still has fear in this area. So he, he's attacking her <laughs> with mirrors. And so she, she keeps blaming Satan for the warfare and the mirrors and stuff, but she's never dealing with that root trauma and fear. Can you see how it's kind of weird? It is the enemy's fault, but it's her fault first. <laughs> you know, it's it's an access point. So, if she, you know, and, and that's hard with traumatic events, how things can creep in and latch on to people. Because a traumatic event is not fair, is it? You know, you think of people that have been raped or something horrible has happened to them. And then the enemy sneaks in and takes ownership in that one area, and then they're in bondage their whole life. So it's a hard thing because you have to say, okay, I recognize this trauma. I cast it down. You know, I, I think I got, a, yeah, I got a prayer by... Um, Hunter on my Freedom Zone One channel <clears throat> specifically targeted for trauma. So, you know, let's say if it's a traumatic thing would be the key. Um, you first deal with the trauma, then you need to repent for the fear. Because um, it's not a God thing, right? <laughs> so, we're not a spirit of fear, right? So you repent of that, and then you have to feed on the opposite of that, and that's words of faith. Um, just building your spirit, man, on everything the opposite of fear. Build, 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 build. And then you will, you know, what you feed on, you become. That's how you conform to Christ. So instead of when the fear thoughts come and you entertain them, you take them captive every single time, and then you confess, I am this in the Lord. And so it's a steady training, and it takes some time some, for, you know, some instances where it's been a long, worn-in path, you know. So that's kind of what I'm giving her um, you know, and I'm not saying, well, it's an access point because you sinned. You know, I don't know. But I'm just giving an example of, hey, if it's, you know, God's not, God's not enjoying this, okay? He's not saying, well, you need to, you know, suffer here, you know? Even Job had an access point because he was in worry, okay? God just doesn't hand people over. No, he's very, made us know very clearly what he feels and thinks about his righteous ones. He loves us very much. But when we have those little areas that where we need to refine, we, we've got to shut those, every little last thing down. And that's what getting our wedding garment ready is. So it's, it's some work. And the hardest work is being real with ourselves, um, is admitting, well, gosh, when that terrible thing happened, even though I was wronged, um, what did I align with? It's hard to be real about that stuff, you know, because when you feel like you're a victim or when you were the victim, but if the enemy can get you even as a victim to agree with him, then that's where it comes in. So, um, kind of a long, drawn-out explanation there, but um, needed, right? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if anybody has any other prayer requests or whatever, uh, text it in or info at hearinggod.tv. You can 
message it in one way or another. Okay, questions from Alfred. He says, do you think it's okay to have a picture of Jesus? Because I do have one in my room, my laptop, and even in my cell phone. So, um, let me talk, you know, post-it notes. Here's post-it notes, right? What's the difference between a post-it note and an idol? That's kind of how you have to approach this whole subject. Bye, chocolate chip. <laughs> um, you know, a post-it note is a reminder, right? Now, it's what I do with the post-it note, okay? Um, do I exalt it? Does it go beyond being a reminder, okay? So, you know, a Jesus picture or whatever, you know, if it calls you at certain times of the day, maybe you walk, you have a, a rhythm in your day and you walk by and it's something that brings your focus back to the Lord. It's a good and healthy thing. You know, is my putting a little um, Bible promise book in the bathroom a bad thing? You know, it, it, it's something, it's there, it's available to, so that if I'm in there for extended time, I can um, focus on the Lord. So it's a helper. So if your picture of Jesus becomes more of like an idol, um, you know, and it's not reminding you of the Lord and, or, you know, and that's the other thing, in excess if you've all seen that that goofy picture of Jesus that goes like this <laughs> you know if you load your house up with all that kind of stuff I mean it, it can become an idol you know it, it becomes of oh do you have this Jesus yet or oh you know and it's just things to collect it's not really drawing you into the Lord so that's kind of what I got to say about that <laughs> so Obsessive in collection, no, but, um, you know, when it becomes an object, eh. All right, so another question he has, is the Roman Catholics Bible different from the Bible you are reading and from the Bible that are in the stores? This is a question that is just like, ugh, because it's so deep and trying to formulate how to explain it all. It's, you know, the Catholic Bible isn't, isn't bad. <laughs> um, and it's, it's not missing stuff, and you might say that the Protestant Bibles aren't missing stuff, okay? Um, it's, um, yeah, I've I've seen it on the movie Dogma. Did they explain the whole thing in that in that movie? Um, basically, the Protestant, Catholic, and the Orthodox New Testaments are identical. It's the Old Testament that's kind of um, there's differences because you know you got a new Christian faith here, and the Christians are following what the Jews believe, right? So in the process here, the Jews who reject the Messiah are changing things around. And so it's, um, it's kind of a, you know, they're, they're deciding what is inspired and what's not inspired. So it's kind of a weird thing. Um, but let me try and look through my notes here and... Um, it's the Septuagint, which contains what are called the extra books that are in the Catholic Bible. And so basically, um, the most widely used assemblage of scriptures during Jesus' time was the Greek Septuagint. You know, these things were used. Um, the stuff that's in the Catholic Bible was used, and it's even quoted. Um, from some places in the Bible. I mean, you'd have to look up exactly which parts, but from commentary that I've read, 
it's like okay if you if you're reading some protestant bibles and they'll have a quote in the new testament and it's referring to something in the old testament but because the protestants did not receive the septuagint version it's not there so it's kind of it's kind of weird but um it's considered a deuterocanonical book um uh let me see here um okay the greek septuagint was a translation performed about 100 to 150 bc so this was before jesus um, the books themselves were written earlier than this um, it says many of the deuterocanonical books were indeed written in hebrew but this was not known until the discovery and analysis of the dead sea scrolls so see it's kind of like a back and forth back and forth thing um, you know it's not going to hurt you if you look at the stuff um, but I don't think anybody's damned by not adding it, you know, or vice versa. <laughs> you know, uh, the Lord will guide you into all truth. So, um, you know, I, I grew up Catholic and I knew about the stuff. Um, I don't, there isn't anything that I feel like I'd be missing. Um, you know, the Catholics like to say that, um, some of those books will, um, what do they call it, um, kind of point to, um, what is it called? Uh, all right, Any, let me look through the notes, see if there's anything else. Um, so some things were rejected and received based on the language it was written by the reformists. And so, um, you know, then you got the Dead Sea Scrolls, so, I mean, what do you do? Um, it, it's not, really not add or take away. It just comes down to was it inspired or uninspired. Um, and yet, you know, if stuff from the New Testament are quotes from it in the Old Testament, maybe there's some validity there that, you know, if our founding fathers were quoting from it from them and it's not there well maybe it may be something to get a copy of and and consider and uh you know ask the holy spirit to to move through you verse you know through it so anyhow that's kind of all i got to say about that i mean you you can you can research it yourself <laughs> me trying to explain it is ah yes dear what do you need okay <laughs> I think he's saying, hey, Mom, it's been over an hour. Well, it's been over an hour because of technical dif difficulties. So I'm sorry. But, hey, we got on here. Um, I think that's all we have for today except for I want to pray for James. I want to be sure I didn't miss anything else. You know, I skip around sometimes. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you can you just, you know, go somewhere else for a little bit? Pretty please. Would you do it for all of us? See all these people? See these people here? They think you're cute, but we're going to finish praying, okay? Okay. Go in the other room, please. It'll have to wait a minute. Please go. It'll be real quick, I promise. Bye, everyone. Okay. Okay. Lord Jesus, we do indeed lift up James to you. James has organic brain dysfunctions. And it, it's kind of like, you know, we're talking about that white syndrome with um, Jason's heart kind of electrical dis disruption it's kind of that way in james's brain and it, and it causes other things to 
misfire, okay, the neurons and everything. And so, um, you know, he has, has some other conditions too. Um, obviously, you know, things are misfiring and not communicating, and so other problems arise. So we just seek you, Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the healer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that when you came, you healed them all. We call forth your Holy Spirit to come forth in power over James's body. We bind up these attacks over his body now in the mighty name of Jesus. We call forth that new brain, that new brain and all associated tissue to work with it. That he not be in lack or in pain or agony. We bind up trial from him in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no place in this servant of the Most High God. Call forth your manifestation of your healing power to flood through James's body. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that every synapse, every bridge will function and marry together. That the mind and the body are one in function and purpose. Bind up despair from him in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no place in this brother of ours. The joy of the Lord is more than his strength. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you pick him up. I thank you, Lord Jesus. We speak protection over him. We speak shielding over him. We speak any words against him to fall down void and powerless in the name of Jesus. Even, even things that have not come to his ears from the medical professionals that care for him, I call those things down now, void and powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak health and abundant life over him. Thank you, Jesus. Infuse him with the impartation of your great, great and mighty peace. Refresh his body. We declare things are better, not worse. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And we're going to keep praying it till it manifests. All right. Well, that's all I have for this week, guys. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, Dylan's going to go for us with homework power. <laughs> okay, yeah, just when you're doing it, just keep forward motion. If one thing starts to get boring, because that's it's hard when you're working on big assignments for a long period of time, you get bored or distracted or whatever. To just move on to the next thing. Okay, he left the room. <laughs> and then you joined the room again. I was just, I, you started typing. Okay. Uh, I was just telling you, um, yeah, when things get old, uh, move on to the next thing and then just keep cycling back through. So you keep doing forward motion. And, and every time the enemy comes to attack, and tries to get you off kilter, just keep professing that you will complete it in every good thing. But anyhow, thank you all. Oh, Jay, you just showed up. I'm done, man. Where you been?
<laughs> now you gotta wait for the recording. That's okay. I'm recording it, so we're good there. But yeah, I gotta go because uh, my son was on here. Everyone will tell you my son was in here hanging on me saying, ah. So I gotta go. But God bless you all, and thanks for joining. And um, join on uh, uh, hearing God. Uh, no, wait. It's, um, yeah, hearinggod.proboards.com. You can put your prayer requests in there all week long and chit chat, okay? Um, so use your giftings, all right? So God bless you all and thanks for joining and see you next week. Bye.